Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a rational expression. We have x to the fourth power plus 3x squared plus 4 divided by x squared plus x plus 2. And we're going to simplify this expression. I'll be presenting three methods. And let's start with the second one. So for my second method, I'm just going to set this expression. Obviously, I expect to get a polynomial from here. So that means the top is divisible by the bottom evenly with no remainder. So look at the top. It's a quartic divided by a quadratic and they're both monic, which means the coefficient, the leading coefficient is one. So we expect to get something like x squared plus, you know, ax, bx, whatever you want to call that. There's an x term and there's a constant. But if you look at the 4 and the 2, the constant has to be a 2 because 2 times 2 equals 4. You can only get a constant by multiplying constants if you're dealing with polynomials. Great. Now we're going to go ahead and cross multiply these two. And let's see what we get from here x squared plus x plus 2 multiplied by x squared plus bx plus 2 is supposed to equal x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 4. Great, so these are polynomials on either side. We're going to set them equal, arrange the coefficients, and then, you know, um, just solve the equation that way. So we're going to find the unknown b. Just to spare you the trouble, I'm going to give you what we get from the left-hand side. You're going to get x to the fourth plus b plus 1 x to the third plus b plus 4 x squared plus 2b, or not 2b, I have to make that joke right, times x plus 4. And that is supposed to equal x to the fourth plus 3 x squared plus 4. Now, what does this mean? It means the coefficient of x to the fourth must be the same, the coefficient of x cubed, so on and so forth, on either side of the equation. Because these are polynomials that these are true for all values of x, the real number set. So here, uh oh, that doesn't look good. The coefficient of x cubed on the right hand side is, there's no x cubed, so it's zero. So this is supposed to be zero. The coefficient of x squared on the right hand side is a three coefficient of x is 0, there's no x, and the constants are the same. So even though we have a single variable, we have three equations, but they all mean the same thing. So let's just solve one of them. p plus 1 is equal to 0 gives us p equals negative 1. You can always check with these because if, you, if they don't check, then this is inconsistent. That means it's not going to work. Okay, so b equals negative 1 gives us the answer, right? Because this is what we were looking for. So when you divide x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 4 by x squared plus x plus 2, that gives you x squared minus x plus 2 because b is negative 1, the coefficient of x. Make sense? Hopefully it does. Let's go ahead and talk about the first method now because we did the second method first, right? Okay, first method. The first method is called no pain, no gain. So we're going to be doing long division. So here's how it works. We're going to divide. And I apologize if you're not familiar with this type of notation. But this is how we divide things here. We're going to divide x squared plus x plus 2 into x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 4. That's why we write it this way. So x squared goes into x to the fourth how many times? Let's go ahead and find out. So in this division problem, uh, we kind of check the, uh, you know, the highest degree terms. x squared goes into x to the fourth x squared times, right? And then all we have to do is multiply the x squared by that, by the divisor, and uh, that's going to give us, you know, uh, the answer. We're going to subtract it from that. So just like division, right? Okay, let's multiply by x squared. We're going to get, um, okay, I'm supposed to write it here. <laughs> I'm confusing myself too. x to the fourth plus x cubed plus 2x squared. And then what we have to do is negate the second polynomial and add, which means we're subtracting by adding the opposite. So 
we're going to negate the second one. This is going to be a negative sign. This is going to be a negative sign. And this is going to be a negative sign. X to the 4 is going to cancel out. We're going to have negative x cubed. And 3x squared minus 2x squared is just going to be positive x squared. And now we're just going to bring down the 4. Make sense? Okay. Now, what are we going to do next? Next, we're going to divide x squared into negative x cubed. And that goes negative x times. If you distribute or multiply negative x by this, you're going to get the following. Negative x cubed minus x squared minus 2x. And then what we have to do next is, you know, negate everything and add. So we're going to add like this. And we're going to get the following. x cubed, of course, needs to cancel out. x squared plus x, x, squared, plus x squared is 2x squared and then we have plus 2x plus 4 and that should perfectly uh, work because we're supposed to get zero remainder now notice that x squared plus x plus 2 goes into this two times exactly and when you multiply you're going to get the same thing and when you negate and add you're going to get zero remainder so the answer is going to be x squared minus x plus 2 as before right so as a conclusion x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 4 divided by x squared plus x plus 2 is going to be x squared minus x plus 2. And now the third method. And obviously, almost all the time, right? If there are three methods, of course. The third method is usually the easier one or it involves a trick, right? So... How do we simplify this? So since the top is divisible by the bottom, why not try to factor x to the 4 plus 3x squared plus 4? That's a really nice polynomial, by the way. So uh, if you're taking algebra, if you've taken algebra and you've done some factoring, I think you'll enjoy this. Anyways, let's go ahead and factor x to the 4 plus 3x squared plus 4. But how do you factor it? This is a trinomial. So I can think of maybe completing the square. And if I could turn it into, well, it's not factorable as is, like you can't break down four into two numbers whose product is four and whose sum is three. It's not going to work, but sometimes it does, but in this case it doesn't. So we have to think of something else. And that's usually completing the square and turning it into a difference of two squares. But there's several different ways to complete the square. So I could be adding, you know, like uh, five to this to make uh, four a perfect square, or uh, I could complete it differently. So let's go ahead and see what needs to be done. Here, I'm going to go ahead and do the following. I'm going to add x squared to both sides. So plus x squared, or not both sides, I should say because there are no sides. I'm going to add x squared and subtract x squared. And then take a look at these terms. If you simplify x to the fourth plus 4x four squared plus 4 minus x squared. So the addition and subtraction of x squared gives us actually a perfect square minus another perfect square, which we can call difference of two squares. What is this? x squared plus 2 quantity squared. What is this? x squared. Therefore, this can be written as x squared plus 2 minus x times x squared plus 2 plus x. But this was the denom uh, numerator, remember? And the denominator was x squared plus x plus 2. These two are the same. They cancel out, leaving us with the answer x squared minus x plus 2. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.